This year's macOS 11 update, aka macOS Big Sur, is finally rolling out this week, and compared to previous updates, this one is big. Hi everyone, it's Fustra, and here are 11 things you should know about macOS 11. Last year's feature update was called macOS 10.15, or macOS Catalina, and that version was the last update in the macOS 10 series. Now it's 2020 and it's time to make the jump to version 11. One of the reasons for this isn't just a new look, but also because Apple is switching to more powerful Apple Silicon processors, so it's the perfect time to do a substantial update. macOS 11 is compatible with these devices, of which some are already 7 years old. And of course you might think about performance now, and personally I can only speak of my MacBook Air from 2017, which has an Intel i5 and 8GB of RAM, and macOS 11 runs well on it actually. I haven't had any performance or possible heat issues. Even when editing videos in Final Cut Pro, everything works as expected, so for me this update hasn't impacted the performance of my MacBook Air coming from Catalina. Good to know is that the macOS 11 update is 11.11GB. .11 Updating might take a while, so make sure you do this update when you're not in a hurry. First thing you notice after the upgrade is the new interface. In my opinion, it's gorgeous. Let's start with the menu bar. The menus themselves still look very familiar, but the controls on the right side are all redesigned. There's now a volume bar, you can easily switch between output devices, the Bluetooth menu is easier to read, and same goes with Wi-Fi. And there's now a new control center which houses everything you need in one menu, and kind of reminds me of iPadOS. A welcome addition here is the Do Not Disturb button, which is much easier to reach here than in macOS 10 where you had to go to Notification Center. If you like, you can even drag out parts of Control Center and pin them to your menu bar for even faster access. Speaking of Notification Center, you'll find your new widgets there, which are the same as in iPadOS and iOS. Calendar, weather, clock, stocks, screen time activity, podcasts, everything here looks familiar. Personally, I like it because it gives me a sense of continuity and familiarity between iPhone, iPad and MacBook. At the bottom we have a redesigned dock with redesigned icons. Now, they might look a bit strange to you, or again, very familiar, coming from an iPhone or iPad because of the square icons, but they are still different, mostly because of all those shadows that are there. The launch pad is more dense now as well. Wait, you're probably now thinking, this just looks so much like an iPad, and indeed I do see the similarities, of course. Just let me know in the comment section below what you think of this redesign. Personally, I'm okay with it, although I did have to get used to those icons. Uh, just yeah, now, after so many months of beta testing, it, they all seem normal to me now. Windows have been redesigned as well. Finder still looks familiar with a new top bar and a semi-transparent sidebar. These new rounded windows with more subtle shadows are just present everywhere now. Uh, this is Word for example. Prompts now look modern as well. Personally, one feature that isn't seen as one of the top features of this update, but is very practical and useful, is AirPods automatically switching between devices. So I can just keep my AirPods in my ears, listen to music on my iPad, then start watching a video on my iPhone, and change to Mac. It will all just automatically switch between all of them. Safari is redesigned as well, fitting the new design interface in macOS. Most new features have also been pushed to Catalina though, so there isn't really that much new here if you've kept your Mac up to date previously. You can customize your start page with a new background image and turn on or off things that you want or don't want to be displayed. New in Safari are also Safari extensions. Well, they actually did exist already before, but one, you can now download them from the App Store, and two, developers can now port their Chrome extensions to Safari. So this means, or this should mean, that there will be many more extensions available compared to before. 
There's also a privacy button where you can check which trackers are present on any page and you can turn on cross-site tracking prevention. One more Chrome feature coming to Safari is translations, but that is currently limited to certain countries as it's still in beta. According to Apple, Safari is 50% faster at loading frequently visited websites as compared to Chrome and it's also much more battery efficient as well. Next is Messages, which has been entirely redesigned. You can finally use message effects, insert GIFs or GIFs, and even Memoji stickers. You can also create and customize your Memoji here on your Mac, uh, something that was only possible before on iPhone and iPad for a few years now. You can also pin important conversations, and Search is much more powerful now as well. And of course, everything syncs now with my other devices. If you have group conversations, you can also mention people in your message and use inline replies. Next up is Maps, which also has been improved with, for example, Look Around, um, Indoor Maps and more. You can also create guides so you can save interesting places for an upcoming trip or just use existing guides that are suggested to you when you go to a certain city. The Photos app also got an update, not only when it comes to the redesign, similar to iPadOS and iOS, but also the editing tools are updated, along with an improved retouch tool which uses machine learning to improve your photos in one click. Finally, we have Apple Music, which also got a big update to match iOS and iPadOS, uh, adding this new Listen Now menu where I can find my top picks, uh, made for you playlists or made for me playlists, and other music suggestions. I must add though that Apple Music has become way better for me when it comes to suggesting music. Seriously, I couldn't switch to Apple Music because Apple Music couldn't really guess my music taste, but now it can. I'm not really sure if it's a coincidence or if they maybe adjusted their algorithm or something. Anyway, you can just give it a go if you haven't tried it for a while and I hope you'll experience the same. You'll also probably enjoy the interface much more now too. So what do you think of this upgrade? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.